let's do a quick tutorial on setting up the dig emulator front end on the RG552. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Modern Broadcast. Today we're going to be setting up the DIG emulator front end on the RG552. This will be a quick tutorial today, just showing how to set it up and get themes working. So I've connected my RG552 to the HDMI adapter and let's go ahead and scroll on down to the Google Play Store. Now, if your RG552 does not have the Google Play Store, then you probably need to watch the video I uploaded last week showing how to update the firmware to get the Google Play Store on your system. I'll have a link down in the description down below in order to get the Google Play Store working. Now, first thing that we'll need to do is after we get signed into the Google Play Store is go ahead and search for DIG, D-I-G. You'll see here, it's listed here on the third one. It's a DIG emulator front end. We're going to click on that and let's install. All right, now that that's installed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the main menu and show a weird error on the RG552. As you'll see, I have a dig shortcut, but I also have another dig shortcut. Uh, now, I'm not sure why the RG552 has this error when installing apps from the Google Play Store, but to get rid of that, we're going to go to the launcher settings and then we're gonna to go to the hidden apps. Now, you see the two here. Let's go ahead and hide this one. But you'll also notice there's three more down here. Again, I don't know why this error occurs. Um, it looks like I accidentally hid the wrong one. So on your system, you're gonna to have to play with it on which one to hide. So you see it here, when I click on this one, then it pops up with the full image. Um, so again, you're just gonna have to play around with it. But once we open it up here, we'll be greeted with uh, that it needs to give permission to look at files on the device. Let's go ahead and allow. And then it'll have a pretty quick installation here. Once that's done, uh, you can either say okay to look for ROMs on your device now, but let's go ahead and do that later as uh, we're gonna do that manually ourselves. Scrolling on down to the options. Here we have ROM scanning where you can start a manual scan to look at ROMs on your device. And here we have the themes. So by default, uh, we just have a few basic themes, all kind of the same bare bones, but we want something a little bit more robust. So let's go ahead and click on browse themes. And here we can look at some themes that we can install on the device. So once we find a theme that we like, let's go ahead and click on it and it'll open up a web page. Now what I find works best is clicking the three dots in the upper right hand corner and clicking open an external browser. And I choose Chrome. So here we are now in Google Chrome. You'll see some images previewing what the theme looks like. And then down here at the bottom, you'll have a link to click on to download the theme. A window will pop up on where you wanna save it. Let's go ahead and save it to our downloads folder and it'll start to download. All right, once that's finished, we'll have to go back to our dig emulator front end. Go and go back again. And what we want is click on themes. 
and then install theme. So that's under our emulated zero device, which is our system and not the memory card. Push up to get to the download folder and there it is. Let's go ahead and click on that and then confirm. It'll install. Then we need to go back down and click on select theme. And there we have it now on the list. Let's go ahead and click on that. And there we go. You see this theme even has some background music. That is very much so the Wii. But now that we have this, we don't have any games. So let's go back to our options and ROM scanning. And then we'll start a manual scan. So we can either scan the whole device or just a specific folder. And we want to go down to our SD memory card. Then we have to push up, which is a bit odd. And then we can finally push down to scroll through all of our system folders. Let's go ahead and choose Game Boy. And then hit confirm. So a little wrench icon will pop up in the right hand corner. And if we go to systems, we see the Game Boy. So it'll keep blinking as it is adding more games to the system. And then when it adds all the games, it'll then start to download all the images. If for whatever reason, the themes section is having difficulty or is not connecting, go to digdroid.com. I'll include a link down in the description. From there, you can click on themes. And here we can see a whole list of different themes that we can install for our uh, dig front end. I personally think the Retro Redux 2.1 uh, is by far the best one on the system. So I'm going to go ahead and click this download link. And this one's a little bit different where I actually have to hit I agree and then download file. So this one is now downloading and again that's going to the download folders on the actual system device and not the uh, external memory card. Um, notice that there is a size difference where this one's 171 megabytes while our first Wii one was only 30 megabytes. Um, I've seen some go as big as 2.1 like, gigabytes. So it's just something to kind of keep in mind when looking at different themes. You know, the more involved they are, uh, the bigger they are. All right, so once that's done again, we're gonna go on down to our dig emulator and go to options, themes, and install theme. Go and select our device and download. And there it is, and confirm. So after this installs, it's the exact same process as going through the uh, theme browser. It's just instead we did it through Chrome in case it uh, was malfunctioning. And there we have it. So now we have this theme installed. But what if we want to add all of our games that are on our external hard drive? To do that, we need to go to Options, ROM Scanning, and then Start Manual Scan and scan whole device. You'll be greeted with a screen that says this may take several minutes. Once again, we see that ratchet icon in the upper right hand corner, showing that it's starting to work. I'll take this time to quickly explain that this app is free to use. However, in the app section of the options folder, there's an upgrade to premium where you can pay $3.99 for the software that allows for premium like features such as hiding games and deleting certain files. Let's see where we're at with our systems. So we'll see we have Android, uh, Game Boy. So it's starting to populate all the systems and the game files within, but it hasn't downloaded any of the box art just yet. It'll start downloading the box art again after it's added all the game systems and their files.
The simulation front end is very smart, uh, just knowing what systems to populate based off the folders that the ROMs are in and their ROM extensions. Uh, so if you have a DS game, this system will populate. So let's go ahead and pause this here, and we'll check back when it is done populating the list and some of the box art. Alright, now that that's all done, let's go ahead and click on Nintendo GameCube, as that is my favorite system of all time. And we see here we have the box art already installed. Um, looks like for whatever reason it couldn't do Chibi Robo, so let's see what we can do to fix that. Let's click on this here. In the upper right hand corner there's the three dots. Let's go ahead and click on that. And go to Manage Game. And then Rematch File. So it looks like for whatever reason, it doesn't like Plug Into Adventure, as it says Chibi Robo here underneath Star Fox Adventures. So let's go ahead and click on just Chibi Robo. And you'll see it populates the synopsis and the box art. And if we go back, it is now in line with the others. And that is how you fix any games that don't have any box art uh, in your collection. So let's go ahead and start with Animal Crossing. Now what you can do here is you can just click the play button uh, to start playing. But what if it doesn't boot? You want to click the three dots, click manage game, and you'll see the emulator listed at the top here. So it says Dolphin Emulator MMJ, but you could change that if you have other emulators installed. So we could use the RetroArch Dolphin one, but I know on the RG552 that does not work well at all. So using just the Dolphin Emulator MMJ is the best one. You could also click on System Default, as then it tries to pair it with the best one um, suited for the system. So, like I said, right now we're just going to use the MMJ as that works best. Let's go ahead and hit Play. Oh, since I did the firmware update, you'll have to allow each emulator access to your device, uh, the files. So let's go ahead and say Allow, and now let's click Play. All right, and here we go. We are now playing Animal Crossing on our RG552. So you can either play with the screen overlays um, or you can get rid of those. To get rid of them, simply swipe up, up in the right-hand corner, click the three dots, toggle controls, and click toggle all. There you go. I would say Animal Crossing franchise is probably in my top five video game franchise of all time. What are some of your top fives? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.